happy, 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 happy in the Lord. Praise God, I'm born again and trusting in His Word. I want you to know God's promises are true. That's why I'm happy, happy in the Lord. Happy, 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 happy in the Lord. Praise God, I'm born again and trusting in His Word. I want you to know God's promises are true. That's why I'm happy, happy in the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I hope you're all happy wherever you are. We're going to begin with prayer and pray that the place that you are will be a holy place, that you'll invite the Holy Spirit to be with you, and we're going to have a happy hour together. As you noticed, I am not Uncle Milton. I'm Pastor Barbara, and I usually come and be a guest uh, on one of the youth programs, but tonight we are praying for Uncle Milton's brother who has been sick. And they're having a family gathering tonight. And so we're filling in. But we're going to have a lot of fun. Because I'm going to tell you about my best friend. Actually, my second best friend. And I'll tell you why. Let's invite Jesus, where you are, to come and be with us. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we are in your family. And you take care of us. And you remind us that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And actually, we're going to find out that you are our best friend if we choose you. So we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us. Help us to be still and listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you want to stand where you are, we're going to have... Uncle James Lee tonight, and, and Sherry is playing the piano. We're going to have a happy time of singing, and then I'm going to introduce you to somebody very special in my life. He has never been in church before. I hope he gets saved before the night is over. God bless you. Let's well, Pastor, sing. you can tell them about Graduation Sunday, this Sunday. Oh, Graduation Sunday is this Sunday. So if you're graduating or you have somebody who's graduating or you just want to know how we do Graduation Sunday, be here at 10 o'clock. And then those of you who want to go to lunch tonight, I think is the last night. You look at that number if you'd like to go to Maui Lani after the ceremony on Sunday and, and join us for lunch. Talk to Auntie Carol. God bless you. Bye. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone in the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. God's Word will never fail, never fail, never fail. God's Word will never fail, no. No, no, the B-I-B-L-E, that's how God speaks to me. He tells me how to set me free through Jesus Christ in me. Jesus will never fail, never fail, never fail. Jesus will never fail, no, 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 the B-I-B-L-E. That's God's word for me. John 3:16 gave his son salvation's love for me. I'll live eternally forever be Jesus and me. I'll live eternally in glory. Let's sing the first one again. The B I B L E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. God's word will never fail, never fail, never fail. God's word will never fail, no, no, no. And once we learn the word of God and we learn from the Bible, we can go out and tell everybody about Jesus and we'll sing this song, This Little Light of Mine. 
This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine all over Maui, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over Maui, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over Maui, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shine, shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine, shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine, shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And once you know God's word and you go out and share God's word with everybody, then you can come back into service, and these are some songs that we sing during service. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is. Let's sing again. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My Jesus is alive. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. He lives, He lives. Jesus is alive in me. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it. Let's sing it again. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. He lives, He lives. Jesus is alive in me. It's no longer I that did it, but Christ that liveth in me. He that believeth, he that believeth, hath everlasting life. He that believeth on the Father and the Son, hath everlasting life. When I get to heaven, gonna walk all around. At everlasting life, gonna sit down by my Savior, gonna put on my crown. 
hath everlasting life. He that believeth, he that believeth, hath everlasting life. He that believeth in the Father and the Son, hath everlasting life. When I get to heaven, gonna walk all around, hath everlasting life. Gonna sit down by my Savior, gonna put on my crown at the everlasting life. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Man, do you have everlasting life? Well, if you don't know, or you hope you can have it, or you wish sometimes it will happen to you, you stay tuned because we're going to teach you how you can have eternal or everlasting life. That was really well done, our people who are helping us tonight. Well, let me ask you a question, boys and girls. Do you have a best friend? Who is your best friend? Is he or she sitting there with you? Or are they far away? And you sometimes make a call to them or make a FaceTime call. I had two FaceTime calls recently and I did not know what it was. The phone rang, so I answered it. And the first one caught me in a place, but I didn't want it to catch me. Lucky thing, nothing happened. <laughs> And then today, I had Veronica call me, and I was here in the prayer meeting, and I didn't know what it was about, so I just turned it off. But you know what? We can call our friends, and now isn't it amazing that you can see somebody in California on FaceTime or wherever, so you can be in touch with your best friend. Isn't it wonderful to have a best friend? I had two when I was in grammar school and all the way through college, even though we were separated by going through different schools, we kept in touch. And their names were Jane and Karen. And Karen ended up marrying my cousin, my first cousin, so we're now related. But it was always comfortable and fun to have a best friend because we would share secrets together and we would do things together, including getting into trouble. One time, our Girl Scout crew went to Yao Valley to camp one weekend, and the Boy Scouts who had been there a month before told us that it's spooky over there. There are ghosts over there. And of course, we don't believe in ghosts, but they made it sound so real that we said, Karen and Jane and I said, you know, as three best friends, we're going to scare the rest of the girls. So I packed a white sheet because they said it was a white lady. And I was going to be the white lady. And then Karen and Jane, after everybody went into their tents, after the campfire, little singing, everybody was told they would have to go to the, into their tents to sleep. Then they will run into one of the tents and say, the white lady, the white lady. And I will come up and I will stand by the campfire. And so we did that. And you know what? When they ran into the tent, I could hear one of the Girl Scouts says, where's the hatchet? We're going to throw the hatchet to the white lady and get rid of her. And then I ran and said, no, it's me. Don't throw the hatchet. Don't throw the hatchet. We had fun. But sometimes we were naughty. But God forgave us. But you know, besides having Jane and Karen, I had a dog. Our family, we had a dog. He was a black cocker spaniel. So guess what we named him? Blackie. And so we had Blackie there. And you know, have you heard that a dog is man's best friend? And I know that I'm going to get all the cat lovers really mad because I'm going to say, have you ever seen a cat lead a blind man? 
down the mall? Of course not. It's a dog. Have you ever seen a cat run and catch a frisbee? Of course not. Not a cat. It's a dog. So I love dogs. And when they had to remodel my house because I had a flood, I said, you know what? It's a change of season in my life. And all my adult life, I have not had a dog. In fact, we did have one when my brother and I were in Okinawa as missionaries, and we got a little black puppy. And so guess what we named the black puppy? Yoru, which means night. Aren't we creative? Anyway, then I had to leave Yoru behind to come back to America. So I haven't had a dog. So I said, you know what? In my age, I deserve to have a dog. So I started looking around. I started talking about it and trying to decide what kind of doggy I was going to have because I had heard that a dog is man's best friend. And I wanted a best friend. So anyway, then, you know, I had some people, they must have been cat lovers, James, because they said, oh, you can't take care, you don't have time to take care of a doggy. Do you know you have to bathe him? Do you have to clean his poop? Do you know that you have to be sure he doesn't have fleas and all of that? And they said, you're a pastor, you don't have time for that. So I got a little bit discouraged, but I thought, you know what? If you really want to do something, you will make time for it. And so I thought, I really would like to have a dog, so I will make time for it. And then somebody else says, oh, pastor, you should not have a dog. It's too expensive. You have to take it to the vet and get some shots. You have to, you know, check on it every once in a while. If it has an appendix problem, you have to have a, get an operation. And now a dog operation can cost $1,000. And so they started talking about that and discouraging me. And they said, you will not be able to afford to have a dog because they eat a lot of food, too. And then I started thinking about the poor children in the Philippines who didn't have much food. And I thought, and I felt very guilty. And I said, that's right. I can't have a dog. It's going to cost too much. I would rather give the money to some poor child who needs food. Why should I give a doggy his food when I can give it to a child? So I got discouraged, but I prayed. I said, Lord, you said, if I delight myself in you, you'll give me the desires of my heart. So you're going to show me a doggy that will grab my heart. And when it does, I know I can afford it. I know that I'll be able to provide for it. I know I'll be able to clean it. I know I'll have time to take care of it, and not have enough money to feed it. So I left it in the hands of the Lord. And isn't it wonderful? He knows that a dog is a man's best friend, not a cat, a dog. So one night when I was not even thinking about it, I went to Ross's, my favorite store. It was after dinner, and us ladies were just looking around. Then I went to the back of the store, and guess what? I saw my best friend. My heart leaped. He looked straight at me, and we joined in spirit, and we knew we belonged to each other. And so I brought him home. This is Oscar, my best friend. He didn't cost me $1,000. He doesn't need a shot. I don't even have to feed him. He doesn't make poop. He's right here. But he's smiling. And so I put him in the center wall of my little cottage. Every morning when I eat breakfast, I look at him. I say, hi, Oscar. 
and he smiles at me. One day I was really sad and I was having a prayer request and I said, Oscar, I'm really, really sad. I need help. They say that a dog is man's best friend, not a cat. So I said, hmm, I wish you could help me. And you know, my best friend, he just smiled and didn't do anything. Then I realized, because I've been to other countries where I see people going into temples and churches and they're bowing and praying, sometimes to a dog, statue, or a monkey, statue, or a snake, or dragon, statue, and they pray, they pray, and they pray, and they pray, and when I see that, I thought, how crazy is that? It's made out of wood or stone, but do you know, when people don't know that Jesus wants to be their friend, they will choose anything when they're desperate and start praying to it. And I said, Oscar, I'm sorry, but you're not my best friend. Jesus is. So I bowed my head, and I said, Jesus, forgive me for loving Oscar so much. He's just a dog. And he cannot hear, and he cannot talk back. He cannot comfort me. But I remember your word said to me, in Hebrews 13, 5, and I want you to memorize that, James, okay? Hebrews 13, 5. Carol, I want you to memorize that because God wants Jesus to be our best friend. Do you know why? He has ears that he can hear. He has mouth that he can talk back to us. And when we cry out to him, he answers us. And he has the power to heal us and to supply our needs. And in Hebrews 13, 5, it says, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That means run away from you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In another place, he says, call unto me and I will answer. So it's not like those people, you know, bowing down to images of dogs and monkeys and rocks and all that kind of stuff because they cannot hear. But Jesus, a friend that listens to me and talks to my heart when I call on him. And so I want you, those of you who are cat lovers, I want you to change. Not to be a dog lover, but a Jesus lover. Because you see, when you love somebody, you want love back. I have love Oscar, but all he does is smile at me. He doesn't return love. I wanted comfort the other day from Oscar. All he does is smile at me. But when I talk to Jesus, I feel him talking to me in my heart. And I open the Bible and I find how much he loves me. In fact, the golden text of the Bible is John chapter 3 verse 16, and if you have not memorized that, you should, because it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him will not perish, will not die, but will have everlasting life. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want to believe in Jesus and have Jesus as your best friend? I talk to people and minister to people, and some of them are very lonely. And as I leave, I could tell that they're very sad. But I said, you know what? I have to go home. I'm not going to be here during the night. But Jesus said, I don't sleep. I don't need any sleep. I neither slumber nor sleep. You can go to sleep because I'm going to be awake all night and I'm going to take care of you. And so I asked them to trust the Lord. I do this myself. Before I go to bed, 
I ask Jesus and thank him for being my friend and always staying awake to watch over me. Now, if you don't know him, you can know him very well. Maybe you do have a little doggy as your best friend or a kitty. But let me tell you this. Jesus is the bestest friend you can have. Yes, he is. You can love a dog or a cat. Auntie Carol loves a cat, and she's been behaving so well that when she finally helps me clean my downstairs, she's going to move in there, and I told her, keep it up, and I'll let you have a cat. So by fate, she already chose one, and she's ready for it, and I know she's going to behave because she wants a cat very much. I don't know if I'm going to let the cat come upstairs. You know why I don't like cats? Because it comes and wants to be your friend, but he does the most unfriendly thing to me. He'll come and rub his fur on my leg and curl his tail around my leg, and I hate that. And I tell him, I hate that, but he keeps doing it. Not a doggy. A doggy will climb in my lap and lick my face, and I cuddle the doggy. That's why. But you know, it's not a sin to love a cat because God made a cat too. But I wish some of you would change your mind and love a doggy instead. But whoever you love, I tell you what, the best person to love, the best friend you will ever have. In fact, if you love a brother or sister very much, the Bible says that Jesus loves us, will stick with us more than our brothers would. It's not wonderful. He's loyal to us. He will always be there for us. You don't have to take care of Jesus, your friend. He said, I will take care of you. And so if you would like for him to take care of you, and he's not your friend yet, let's welcome him. It's just so simple. Just like the adults, we just simply have to believe that Jesus came at Christmas time, born like a human being in a little manger that means a feeding trough in the shed where the animals are. And the Son of God came to rescue us. And when he was 33 and a half years old, after he taught people who God was, what God said, what plan God has for this world and their lives. After he demonstrated God's character of love and patience and kindness and mercy and forgiveness, he demonstrated by saying to us, everybody who has done a bad thing, everybody who's told a lie or stolen something from somebody or fought with somebody without a cause, and did mean things, and they swear, and they don't believe in God, all of them cannot go to heaven. But Jesus says, I have come that you can have a chance of going to heaven. I am the way, the truth. I'm telling you the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to God the Father but through me. And the soul that sins, it must die. Because heaven is a perfect place, and we cannot have sin. And so if you go to the other place where the devil is, because you didn't get rid of your sin, then that's a choice you make. But Jesus is telling us, you can choose. And he says, although the soul that sins has to die, all sinners must die, if you believe that Jesus took the punishment of your sins on the cross when he died on the cross. Simply believe that. He in his love and mercy, he who said, you have to die for your sins. But the good news is, I will die in your place if you would like for me to. If you choose to let my death be the punishment for your sin. And so tonight, we can choose.
you can keep your sin and keep on lying and stealing and cheating and fighting and swearing. It's up to you. But you know where you're going to end. You're going to end with somebody who's been making your life miserable here, and it's the devil. But tonight, I hope all of you will choose to make Jesus your friend and believe that he has taken the punishment for your sin. And so when you die, you can go to heaven because he's in heaven waiting for us. Will you not just bow your heads tonight and think about what Jesus has done for you? He's better than your best friend because you see, one day your best friend might move away and they won't be there for you. But Jesus said, I will always be there. Even when your mother or father forsake you and leave you, he says, I will then lift you up. And I know that some of you have lost your mom or dad. There's sadness in your heart. But Jesus wants to come and fill that. If you will give that hurt, that pain to him, he will do it. So let us pray. Just bow your heads in prayer. And repeat this prayer after me. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me and knowing my name. Thank you for wanting to be my friend. I need a friend. I need a good friend. And so I choose, Lord Jesus, to let you be my friend, my best friend. Please forgive me for lying and fighting and cheating and stealing and swearing and all the other bad things sometimes I do. I am truly sorry. And sometimes I cannot help it. So I ask that you forgive me and fill me with your spirit right now. I let the evil spirit go and I invite your Holy Spirit to come in. Please forgive me and write my name in your book of life so I can live forever with you, my best friend. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, and I want you always to be with me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. And Father, for everyone who uttered that simple but powerful prayer. I know that all heaven is rejoicing when one person chooses Jesus to be their best friend. And I pray tonight, wherever people are listening, young or old, they will choose you, Jesus, to be a friend above every other friend because in you, there's perfection. You're the perfect friend. You will never leave us. You'll never disappoint us. You'll never forsake us. You'll always cover us and always provide for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for this evening. Thank you for the boys and girls and their parents who have gathered to find out about my best friend. But they found out tonight that Oscar is not my best friend. He's my second or third best friend because Jesus is my best friend. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Amen. Well, I just hope that this word has been comforting to you. And as I said, Uncle James made postcards of my former best friend, Oscar. And if you would like one, just text us at that number and give us your name and address, your first name maybe, and we will send you a copy of my former best friend, Oscar. I love you very much. I would love to hear from you. And so you can text me or call me and the number at the church and leave a message if you'd like to tell me about your doggy or even your kitty or maybe a rabbit or a turtle. I did have a rabbit once. I did also have a turtle. I have a parakeet that could talk, which my friend's daughter 
squeezed to death. So I've had happy moments and sad moments. But God says he made all of these animals for us to enjoy, for our pleasure. So whatever you like to choose, even if you choose a kind of rat, or I hope you don't have a snake. But God made all of these animals for you to enjoy. So I pray that you will love Jesus more than your favorite pet. Because Jesus is the one who made them for our pleasure. Love you very much. Behave. Go to church this Sunday or gather together as a family and sing about Jesus. We will see you again on Sunday morning at 10 when we have a special graduation service. So God bless you now and good night. Behave yourself. Love you. Have sweet dreams tonight. Amen. Aloha.